We've got Adam Kokesh with us, and, and I'm going to talk about his case. I don't want to throw a curveball at him. I was just thinking about this during the break, looking at him getting punched up on Skype. Libertarian uh, patriot activist uh, Adam Kokesh, Second Amendment activist, human empowerment activist. He's a good guy. About the dehumanization depopulation program, because you know Adam over the years, whether it was on 9/11 or a few other issues, and I don't I don't blame him. Those are controversial issues, and you know can't be 100% proven one way or the other. You know we kind of say Alex is a little bit far out there, and I think it's good to have a you know a more spirited debate about that. But, I mean, this stuff is all just right here. They're replacing the military with robots. They're designing the whole grid to go after individuals. They're trying to disarm and dehumanize and make the public sick on record. Lighthouse science, czar, eco-science, they put fluoride in the water to give you cancer and dumb you down. And people go, oh, that's a little extreme. Because you've got to admit we're under total positronic attack, you name it. If you look at all their admissions. And that, that's the thing. Then it's not fun anymore to just kind of halfway fight this. And I'm not talking about Adam Kokesh, I'm talking about the general public. Believe me, I wish you guys were right. So I wanna ask Adam Kokesh what he thinks of basically the worldview I'm putting out. Not what about what he thinks about me, but you know, what does he really think? What does he think the world system's based on? Where does he think it's going? What does he think about the new world order, global governance? <clears throat> but I first wanna talk about the fact that he has so much courage in a land of cowards to go and rack a shotgun, which is the D.C. Heller case. An off-duty cop couldn't even have a shotgun in his house for his own safety. Security guards that you know guarded uh, places where they had enemies couldn't have guns. And five years ago, plus the Supreme Court said you got to let them have guns. Still no guns. Same thing uh, there in Chicago. Not just uh, in the District of Criminals, there between Maryland and Virginia on the East Coast, but also in the middle of the country, uh, up there uh, on the Great Lakes, you got Chicago that still doesn't let anybody have guns. Unless you're an insider government person, then you get some special permit nobody else can get. <clears throat> you give $20,000 to the mayor's reelection campaign, suddenly you you know, you know get one. And that's, that's, by the way, how you get gun permits in New York, is you give the going price is $20,000 to the mayoral campaign or the reelection campaign, and then you get one. If you don't, you you can be a cop, and you're gonna have trouble uh, you know, getting one, or a retired cop. Uh, so, so this is the way this works now. Okay, and they're going to get rid of the police and the warrior class and guns soon with the whole robotic takeover that's being reported on today. So I want to get into the futurist mind of Adam Kokesh and get into some topics I haven't heard him talk a lot about. I know he's talked about a lot of subjects, but I've missed it if he has. Of course, he's hosted shows on national television, his radio host, and of course he got arrested and then set up and a lot of stuff happened. And I, I kind of want the long and short of that to then move forward. He just got sentenced with probation where he's going now. Um, Hope he doesn't just disappear into Hollywood movies because he's starring in some pretty big movies that are coming out. I could have gone that route as well. That's pretty much how they get you to join the system. Or if you're talented, they, they just need good actors. But uh, he's got some of that stuff coming up as well. Uh, and he joins us right now. So, Adam, uh, I threw a lot of stuff out there as I usually do. Uh, let's talk about your case. That's, that's a great introduction, Alex. I'm so grateful. And, and before we get into it, let me just say... Uh, human empowerment activist is the the greatest title uh, you could give me, and I'm I'm so grateful for that and your appreciation of my work. And I got to say, you know, I got thousands of letters when I was in jail. A lot of them were from fans of Infowars.com and your show, and I, and and I know you had my back while I was in there when uh, you know when I was getting betrayed by a lot of people that I thought had my back, and I, I'm I'm really really grateful for that. So um, I, I can't thank you enough for having me on today when I'm you know just trying to put my life back together and get back on my feet. Uh, as as you mentioned, you know I'm I'm dealing with probation right now, and actually just today before before I did our sound check for this, I was on the phone with my probation officer. I'm banned from D.C. from two years, so I got to get it transferred to California. You don't have to worry about me going Hollywood. I'm not talented enough. We've tried that, um, but I am looking to relaunch uh, AVTM as Adam versus the Man 4.0. And I learned a lot of lessons the hard way, but we're going to come back better and stronger with the product that the, the fans deserve. So for people who want to support that still, Adam versus the man .com and, and Alex, really, you know, your support of, of activists like me is incredible. And that's one of the things that I really look forward to doing again is, is getting forward to, to being a part of the, the Liberty Movement media community and supporting independent activists who, who do take the risks and put themselves in harm's way. Well, people are always calling for armed marches, and they're always calling for get tough, do this and that, and then you do it. And you got a lot of support, but also a lot of criticism, especially from backbiting so-called libertarians and other people. 
uh, who don't really want to, you know, take the full society back. And, and I'm not mad at anybody. My point is when people are down, that's when I'm really in their corner. Uh, and I mean, I want more activists. I want more leaders. I want to win this thing. I, I know we can win it if we stop thinking like losers and realize we have the good ideas. We have the product that sells. Legalized freedom, as Ron Paul says. Uh, and I just admired, you know, you, you were first to tell me I was sitting, um, I think it was a Saturday morning. I just swam two miles at Barton Springs and I was sitting there just deliciously exhausted in my truck about to go home and make my kids lunch. And you sent me a text and said, uh, I, you, know, uh, you know, this YouTube link just went live five seconds ago. And I was like, when I went to it, it said two views. <laughs> and, and, and boom, you know, and of course, they get views in seconds. And I saw you rack that shotgun down there. Recap for folks what you did, the thought crime, and now uh, where all that went. And the, reportedly, you said they tried to set you up with drugs. And then, and then talk about what happened to you in jail and where all that's going. Sure. Well, it started with the proposal of an armed march. And then when I got disappeared in Philadelphia for a week and, and I was really uh, lucky with how that played out. I mean, uh, if you get set up on false felony assault of a federal officer charges, you know, there's only one good way that turns out. And that was that they did dro drop the charges. But I, I had to play hardball and I was in solitary there for a week. Uh, but the feds came back and this time planted stuff. See, that's the issue. They never stop right. once they once they come after you. Right. Well, I, I realized that at that point that the armed march was irresponsible, not because of the concept or not because of the ideals behind it, not because of Kathy Lanier, chief of police in D.C., promising violence, but because I was not properly set up for it. And I was not capable of organizing this from a jail cell. I was if they were going to be able to just disappear me, then it would be irresponsible of me to say, go on. Um, you know, here's an event that's going to be organized and well put together because I couldn't guarantee it at that point. So I canceled it. But I, I thought that that I really wanted us to, to continue the, the purpose of the march, which, was, which is to raise awareness on a much broader scale, not just about how the government treats people's individual rights, but that self-defense is a civil right. It is a fundamental human right to be able to defend yourself how you see fit. And in a sense, I succeeded beyond my wildest dreams. We had incredible, you know, wall to wall media coverage uh, when, when that happened, especially local TV. Every time there was anything going on, anytime I went to court, um, well, I, when I was in jail, every time I was on TV, all the other inmates would be cheering, at least once I got to general population out of solitary confinement, which I was in for two months. But they uh, they responded with a SWAT team raid, and you know I, I feel kind of naive. I, I really do feel silly in the sense that I, I radically underestimated the personal cost that this would entail. Well, to well me. listen, I'm not tooting my horn, and I said I admired your courage, but I said they were going to come after you and maybe even yeah. kill you, and I told you because they, they they fear an armed march because uh, it's not at their time. I've seen their provocateurs do it before. I know you're not a provocateur. So they could then demonize a movement under Clinton. But now they don't want that because they know the public would be behind that. If they yeah. crushed you, it would probably start a new 1776 shot heard around the world. And I told you, I said, get ready for shot heard around the world. We're starting to win in the info war, Adam. I don't know if this is a good move, but you have a right as a free man. You know, it, it's like this article here. This was part of the info war, Alex. This was part of raising awareness. And in that part, I, I feel extremely successful. No, I agree, but they have a guy running for uh, uh, office in Florida, you know, who said that he agreed with someone saying that, uh, you know, uh, I'm past impeachment. It's time to hang him high, talking about Obama. And the Secret Service went to him, and I never call for violence on Obama. He's a puppet. But at a certain point, when we're being attacked, as, as Professor Turley uh, said before Congress a month ago, when there is a unitary executive and dictatorship coming in, and the government's lawless, I mean, our founders you know, did start resisting. And, and my only point is, I want to fix this peacefully. But but they are marching against us with violence. They are gearing up for war with us. The war has already begun, as Patrick Henry said. So uh, where do you see all this going? Because, because, I mean, what do you say about treason? I mean, by all yardsticks, Obama has committed high treason on hundreds of fronts. And so they're going to go and say, why are you saying he should be hanged? O obviously, he's saying he should be hanged because he's politically a traitor. I don't think the guy's saying he wants to hang Obama. So, But I mean, my issue is we get to the point of, you, you know, it's like, what this guy said, you know, that it's high noon when it's high noon. I mean, you know, he called it what it is. I mean, it, is the truth uh, a criminal act? Go ahead. Well, Alex, the only people who call you paranoid are the ones who are ignorant about how much we have to be afraid of.
And you're absolutely right. And 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 I gotta I gotta hand it to you. You 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 were a better estimate here or estimator here of, of the potential costs of my activism. And regardless now, I'm on probation for two years. I'm banned from DC and I'm gonna be sticking to my media production, focusing on the book that I've written and, and getting back to full production. So about those bigger questions that you raise, I, I think I'm a little more optimistic. And I, I believe that people are waking up. I believe there's a paradigm shift happening. And you're right that we're coming to a, a dangerous point that, you know, especially with the NSA where it is and, and the administration being, you know, completely, uh, you know, unrepentant about all the violations of privacy and all of the, the incredible hypocrisy coming out of the Obama administration. And, you know, you're, you're absolutely right that, that, that such, you know, things would be justified and that, that we'd be much better off. If, if we could have Obama impeached, but that in and of itself isn't going to do it. You know, you need the foundation of the change in the thinking of the people. And, and that's why, you know, your work as an info warrior, that is so much more important than than any particular manifestation of it. But as you know, I'm running for president in 2020 on the platform of an orderly dissolution of the federal government. And as libertarians, we get accused of being uh, heartless often or, or, or not compassionate enough to the less fortunate in society. And we know, who, those of us who believe in libertarianism, because we believe that liberty is inherent to self-ownership as human beings, anything less is some form of slavery. We understand that that's about the non-aggression principle, that a free society is one where universal non-violence is, is embraced. This is the most compassionate philosophy possible. But we really do fail ourselves and, and we fail to represent ourselves well when we fail to acknowledge the reality of the current situation, how many people are dependent. And it seems often that, that, that a lot of libertarians are kind of hoping for a collapse when we should be working towards a smooth transition. Oh, and I agree. I do not want to collapse. The right. system wants a collapse so they can reorganize on record Cloward and yes. Piven. Of course, I use that as an example because it's well known. Cloward and Piven didn't invent imploding something to control and re-engineer a society. The Romans did that. The Babylonians did that. Uh, you know, the Egyptians did that to the Israelites. I mean, this is how governments do this. And they say, oh, the Constitution's old. No, it's the new idea. They're taking us back to feudalism because they're threatened by a real renaissance of human empowerment. They're selling the fake transhumanist movement. Uh, as an idea of human empowerment when they're actually jacking into it their fraudulent systems of control. They're not real transhumanists. I mean, it's all counterfeit frauds. The system's scared. But I don't think the system can manage all the things they're creating and running. And so undoubtedly, it's going to come down. The question is, can it be a soft landing? Right. And nobody can really predict what's going to happen in, in the midterm. You know, we can look at the short term trends. But in the long term, what's clear is that government is being rendered obsolete because we know that relationships based on voluntary cooperative interactions rather than coercive, forceful, violent reactions are, are always going to be more positive, are always going to be better for humanity. Technology is empowering us to do this and it is it is given us the way forward. And and I'm I'm really hopeful that people will embrace this idea, this message of localization, that we that we dissolve governments from the top down. And and you're absolutely right that they, they the the elite would rather have a collapse because that gives them just another opportunity to institute a new racket, a new form of government, and, and possibly even consolidate power. But if we do this in an orderly manner, we, what we need to do is fill the power vacuum that would be there with self-government and localization provides the mechanism of doing this. Now, the last time we spoke, Alex, you know, we had a wonderful, vibrant debate about, you know, how we get to this point. And, and I don't know if, if your, your uh, perspective has changed with, with some of the recent news and, and, you know, looking at the federal government as, as a concept, but uh, you only, as far as I'm concerned, you only have one extreme viewpoint, and that is that we can salvage the federal government at all, or that if we have such a paradigm shift, that we should try to reform it or no, no, it's just that it's just that we could sell to the public truthfully a re-upload of the Bill of Rights Constitution, and and because you're not going to they're not going to understand because it isn't a revolution. They've had a revolution of tyranny against the American system. We could re-upload the old republic. And, and, and that would be a hell of a lot better than the collapse and the Agenda 21 takeover. And then through that system that allows freedom, we could then phase out the government within the republic system.
Well, I, I absolutely agree with you that that would be a huge step forward. And if it happens that way, Alex, I will support it and enthusiastically reap all of the benefits for society that, that would come from, from such a reorganization. However, I do believe that we're much more likely, not just, to, as you say, to sell this to the broader public, but, but really to, to make steps forward much more immediately by dissolving the federal government, restoring state governments as sovereigns. And, you know, the, the, the structure that we have in the United States provides us that framework. And if we're able to do that, that also restores the idea of sure, self sure. Here, here, here's the problem. Problem. The, the federal government's already been transferred to the globalist. They've already infected all the private and public pension funds, universities, everything. They're not stupid by design with their fraudulent derivatives. 76% plus of Western money goes into comprehensive annual financial report, double set of books. We've already been totally taken over, Adam. And so they're doing a circumnavigation in run, trying to take over the libertarian movement at Bilderberg. And at other levels, and I mean, I've been contacted by, by multiple ultra high level sources in the last month. I mean, just ultra as high, I mean, just the very like right below the actual owners. I mean, you know, famous technocrats, you name it. I mean, you know, the Kissinger group years ago, you know, tried to get me to join with them. But the point is, is that and I and and you know, it's like the Godfather when he meets with the other head guys and he and he says, you know, I met with you because I know you're a serious man, need respect. At a certain point, though, it does show that we have power, that the establishment would even be reaching out to people like myself, and I'm sure reaching out to many others, because they know that, that liberty's popular, that liberty's rising, that the zeitgeist is rising. The uh, Financial Times of London said that last week. They understand that. They can't beat us. They can't even co-opt us, but they're trying to then blame government that was used as a sieve to suck money to corporations that are bigger than governments and act like governments, corporate cronyism, to then implode everything and then bring in corporate corporate governance on top of it that's even worse because it's so much more predatory and coordinated than government. Sometimes that government is screwed up is actually a buffer to their corporate centralization that is so much more even deadly and it becomes maybe a fourth branch of government separation of powers is what I'm saying so that you don't get that one Sauron level controller system worldwide. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking yeah. about real, real political science, real geopolitical integration, real, real politic. Go ahead. Yeah, well, absolutely. But one of the appeals of localization is that it doesn't matter if you're a liberal or a conservative or a mainstream statist. It appeals to everybody because it means that everybody will have more local government. No, that's what I want. Yeah, I want that. They need, you know, and it also allows for the reclamation of property that has been unjustly acquired by all of these mega corporations. But one way or another, this is the future of humanity, Alex. And and it's it's just it's amazing to be in the fight, you know, with someone like you and to be a part of this to. To be to, to see this evolutionary process, to be on the verge of, of this paradigm shift. I mean, you can you can see, as as you said, liberty. It, it, it I don't know if it's popular yet, but it's it's certainly a lot more than it was. Well, the growth curve shows it going through the stratosphere. And exactly, exactly, and and sooner or later, it's going to be the status quo. We just have to keep doing what we're doing, and and it's it's a, it's a beautiful time to be alive. You know, you mentioned the technology. I think the technology is so key to human empowerment. Just you know, the, what we're able to do with the internet. You know, like we, kids with smartphones in high school classrooms being able to 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 check, you know, fact check their teachers, their their paid government propagandists, indoctrinators, and being able to go, wait a second. You know, you can lie to us, but you can't get away with it anymore the fact that you know even even uh, production as, as industrialization as a, as a concept that leads to centralization and some form of corporatism you know 3d printing is going to kill that the idea of government being able to do things in the dark and not have accountability when we all have contacts uh, contact lenses that are video cameras that, that that upload to the cloud i mean what we're coming to and and i know it, it might sound far-fetched but i i know to your audience who's uh, attuned to these trends you see these things as right around the corner. You go, wow, you know, can you even imagine the kind of government we have today existing in a world where people have this kind of access to information and that kind of empowerment? No, it's, it's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, though. Obsolete. Absolutely. But they're built, they built the grid with back doors and kill switches and control algorithms that before they allow a liberty singularity, they're going to use the system to actually selectively shut it off and program the public. And there's the downside, the lowering IQs, the loss of skills, the You're screen right. time, the rewiring yeah. of brains. I, and what I'm telling you, Adam, is they foresaw this a long time ago and made the decision to hardwire into the grid 
an anti-human suppression system. And, I, and, if, it's, and, if the, and it, it, it's something we have to watch out for. And, and the, the term that I use, or the way that I describe it is, you know, we, we can hope that government spares us in its death throes as it violently clings to power. I know, but it's, it's major corporations that have been running and directing the government since the days of Eisenhower on record. I'm mm -hmm. saying, how do you respond to the private corporate technocrats that only use government as an enforcement mechanism? Well, you take away the enforcement mechanism, and through localization, you reclaim unjustly acquired property. And it's not a perfect solution, Alex. You know, because you're someone who cares about this. You're you're incredibly compassionate, and you, you see these problems, and and you want to avoid the collapse. So, I, you know, it, it's there's there's no there, you know there's there's no fun easy way to untangle this knot. But we you know we can make it as smooth as possible by by really grabbing onto these issues. Well, I know this. You know what you're saying, and what Ron Paul and many others are saying is a lot and what i'm saying is a lot better plan than what they want is total collectivization total control and basically slavery overseen by robots and tech i mean you know anything's better than that well and, and in fact a, a collapse of this evil system is better than them winning well, you mentioned you mentioned my experience uh, with the Marines in, in civil affairs in, in Fallujah in 2004, and a, a big. Tell you what, stay there. I'm coming right back to you. All We're right. going to cover that, get into more, and then and then take phone calls. Now you can watch the Infowars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show. I look at all the degenerates out there that have been ruined by this system who hate advancement, who hate success, and misery loves company. You people out there that don't like humanity and are collectivist, it's because you're either stupid and have never been empowered or you're parasites, and you are an enemy. This hour, by the way, is brought to you by MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex if you want to find their specials, MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. Their toll-free number to find out about specials and all the great products they offer. Not just storable food, the highest quality, but other great preparedness items. 866-229-0927. 866-229-0927. MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. Delicious, easy prepare, put together with GMO-free crops. Storable for up to 25 years, and they're a sponsor of this broadcast. So there you go. Lastly, uh, we are supported through free association by you going to InfoWarsStore.com where we have hundreds of the best films, including some of mine, and books on every subject from vaccines to the FEMA camps to the New World Order to the master plan to break down society. The Obama deception, Fall of the Republic are probably the best films at that end game. Blueprint for Global Enslavement. It's vital to have stuff off the grid that's hard copy in the future. They want to phase out hard copy books, hard copy films. It's key to keep all those libraries and to make copies of my films that are not to people. Infowarsstore.com or call toll free 888 253 3139. And of course, we have Infowarslife.com that has uh, the products that we put out the high quality Mexican, high mountain, uh, organic, uh, volcanic soil grown um, coffee. The two different uh, blends of that we have that's my favorite. People either say it's their new favorite or they love it. it it's really good coffee. And then we have the uh, three supplements we've come out with in the last six months. We come out with more, but Quite frankly, it's hard to find stuff of the highest quality and to not compromise. But the three products we've got there, Survival Shield, Fluoride Shield, and Super Male Vitality are totally natural, non-GMO. And I'm just really, really proud of these formulations. And, well, you see, nothing uh, succeeds like success. They're very popular and successful now because the reviews are nothing but stellar. I mean, I've never seen reviews this good. That's not hype. Go look at, listen to callers, look it up online. I mean, people are foaming at the mouth over these, and it's helping us fund the operation. I've been able to... Uh, cut back on uh, outside advertising and stuff uh, you know, to keep the operation going and expand it. But if you continue to purchase it, if you continue to purchase it, you're going to hear less advertising here on air because i got more important stuff to do, folks. I'm only going to bring in high-quality water filters at the lowest prices. I'm only going to bring in high-quality Patriot apparel to spread the word. I mean, I'm, I'm going to sell you what I'd want to buy. And so what you get is my taste. What you get is what I think is good. Does it mean everything I do is the best in the world? No, because I probably haven't discovered stuff even better. But I, I try to give you the best I got. It's like you come to my house for dinner, I'm going to try to make you the best dinner I can make you. You know, because I like being nice to people. I like people being nice to me. I like hospitality. I like taking my steak when I'm done and giving little chunks of it to my French bulldog and hand feeding it. And I like it cuddling me at night, giving it kisses. I'm a nice person. And, and, and it's that type of idea that's going to change things. And it's not because I'm a wimp. 
We need to get back to men being loving and caring, but also vicious when it comes to defending their liberties. These evil people aren't tough, folks. They're not strong. They're weak. The only reason they're in power is because we let them run things. And it's time we let them know we're not intimidated, we're not backing down. We're here as a platform for Ron Paul and Adam Kokesh and countless others, and Dr. Sherry Tenpenny and Joel Skousen and all of them. And this is a precious platform, and I appreciate you allowing us to bring you this platform. We couldn't do it without you, so thank you for the support. Adam, briefly, I want to give you five, six minutes to cover other topics, and then we're going to go to some folks' calls. You're welcome to ride shotgun for that and have a debate about it if you want. We're talking about abortion. But uh, other points you'd like to make while you've been holding, hearing me babble. Oh, sure, love to. And, and there's two things I really want to cover before we get to that. One is the epiphany that I had when I was in jail. But first, uh, to get back to what we were talking about, when I was in Fallujah in 2004 with the Marines, a lot of the mentality of the troops was based on a dehumanization of the enemy that is really beat into us through propaganda. And it's done in subtle ways so that most people don't even realize it. And I think this is the most important part of the paradigm shift that's happening right now. You know, how are you gonna convince people to go and kill others on the other side of the planet when you know you can connect with them on Skype, how are you going to convince cops to go shoot at protesters when the cops can look on their smartphones? Wait, these guys are protesting for a reason that I agree with. You know, how are you going to convince all of the enforcers of various government policies to do their thing in a world that is so much more connected and so much more humanized? And the technology is really providing us the ability to come together in that way. And I think it's important that we embrace this. And to hear you talk about, you know, your your bulldog and, and, and all like, you know, it's, 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 it's beautiful. I love that. I think that, that, that that's, that's incredible. You know, we really need to embrace that kind of mentality of, of seeing the universality of the human experience. And, and this is something that I appreciated from my experience in Iraq that I think was unique as a result of my particular experience in civil affairs. And, and that is that you realize everybody, you know, he lives in the same headspace. We all want to love and be loved and respected, and we all want to connect with each other. We all want to be able to thrive. And those are the kinds of things that are going to render government obsolete because government is based on that disconnectedness. Government requires people to feel that they are separate from each other. Same thing about the you know international uh, corporations that you mentioned that with, with you that use government as enforcers, and, and and again the the incredible profusion of human productivity and wealth that's coming that's that's in a way already here is going to go a long way to rendering those organizations completely irrelevant. So the second thing is when I was in jail, I spent uh, two months in solitary confinement. Had some you know I. I can say that I enjoyed my government-induced, taxpayer-funded spiritual retreat, and I, I learned a lot from it. And you know, it, it certainly was uh, less of a challenge than I experienced in combat. The, you know, the real challenge for me was, you know, having my operation trashed and, and coming home to a mess and having to start from scratch. And you know, like I am so grateful for your support and uh, everybody who's, who supported Anna versus the Man. Uh, I've got a crowdfunder campaign going on my website right now for people that want to help me get Adam versus the Man back on its feet. As a business and, and launch properly. But there is a thing that a lot of us have backwards in the way we think about the relationship between liberty and happiness. And we're all familiar with the words life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we think of that as a progression. Because if you're not alive, you can't you know, have liberty. And if you, you know, then if you don't have liberty, you can't have happiness. But I think that second part is backwards. And if you understand, you know, what, what I learned from my experience in Iraq of, of being able to, you know, be happy in, in a combat environment and be able to put a smile on your face every morning and, and really just be, be able to enjoy life regardless of your situation. Well, I guess the jail experience took that to a new level for me where I really internalized it. And it's a choice. Happiness isn't something that you go out and beat over the head with a club and, and drag home to enjoy forever and ever. It's a state of mind. Freedom is does, does not allow you to pursue happiness. It, it allows you to pursue certain physical things that, that statism prevents you from pursuing, certain material immediate things. But what really causes liberty is internal liberty, is choosing to be happy. Is no, real. I agree. I said that at the start of the show today. We've got to make a break with them with the parasites, the vast majority of people are good and want freedom. 
They have just been programmed and made to be mentally ill and screwed up so the system can control them with outside stimuli and buttons yeah. they push, the race baiting, the religious division, all of it so that they can rule us. And then you realize that for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Just as they want to use the web to track, control, and become God and dominate us, we're going to use it to humanize. That's why they're in a race to replace people with autonomous robots and drones on, on record is because they know there is a human singularity coming together of, of basic human value and it's being rediscovered. And as bad as things are getting, I'm also seeing a lot of really good things out of people as yeah. well. As folks find out the TV, the culture, not, uh, you know, bling, status, none of that's going to deliver happiness. Being honorable and feeling good in, in your spirit. Uh, is 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 really the secret. And so as this great evil rises up, there is a goodness rising up to counter it. And, and that's just a mathematical law of quantum mechanics. It's even simpler. You know, what's the point of being happy if you don't know how to, or what's the point of being free if you don't know how to be happy? And happiness is something that you don't have to wait to be free in order to choose. It's something you choose right now. And a lot of people will say, well, but, but Adam, it's not that easy. And that's the thing. It, it really is that easy. Well, let me ask you this question, because you've been through a lot in combat and then being in solitary confinement. And, and, and historically, that either breaks people or makes them have epiphanies and get much, much stronger. But and it's a choice. It's always a choice. And what we are doing, Alex, and you know this, we choose emotional servitude. We choose as a, as a society. We have chosen to live in fear of government. We have chosen to allow these things to affect us. And all you have to do is choose to be happy. But I was going to expand on that. How do you deal, though, with all the evil going on? Because I try to be positive in my fight against it. But at the same time, I don't want to say it gets me down. It's more of the Bible says, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the beginning of wisdom is sorrow because then you really see how fallen much of society is, but then you want to uplift it. It's kind of like sticking your hand in a fire. It hurts. You pull it back. You know, we need to have that legitimate suffering, though, at the same time for what's going on, because I'm sure it was you seeing, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the death and the pain and, and, and the humanity in people on both sides that showed you that it was really a fraud. Right. Because, I mean, there has to be legitimate suffering as well. How does suffering enter into that? Because it was your suffering in the solitary confinement that help makes you find that uh, that quiet place uh, the most high. Right. I decided it wasn't suffering anymore. I decided I didn't want to suffer. I decided that I want to be happy and I chose to do it. And it's not automatic. It's a discipline. But we will never control what the world does to us. We will never control our circumstances as much as we would like to. And we will also never control our animalistic reactions and responses to these stimuli. But our conscientious response, as long as we remember this, is always our choice. Our attitude is always our choice. And when you internalize that and you decide that you are going to live by the discipline of happiness or the discipline of living well, of living deliberately, of being internally, psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually free, then everything falls into place. It's a discipline, but it's a choice. And it's if, if, if you're saying no, if you're saying, oh, no, I can't do that, I haven't suffered enough. No, I mean, it's just like exercise or sports or, or, or in a fight with somebody if somebody starts a fight and they get you down they're kicking your butt you just it's like flipping a switch you go i'm gonna stomp this guy on the ground you flip the switch and, and it's the same thing politically we got to flip the switch get out of the fear and get aggressive because we've got those animalistic drives as well to drive us with an intellectual cerebral cortex on the front to direct it and government wants to keep us as dumb, stupid animals, to be pawns in their foreign policy, to be pawns in their domestic policy, to be good little slave citizens, to continue to be exploited. And as soon as you realize that you don't have to live that way, that it is a choice that is it just essential to the human experience, that every human mind has Exactly. No, it does empower you. I can't tell you how many unhappy people that had wealth, you name it, find uh, God, find prayer, uh, find resistance, find admitting the world's run by evil people is not a scary experience at many levels. It's empowering to yeah. just be honest and just and just step up. And that's what's empowering people, Adam.
Absolutely. And, and, and for me, meditation was an important part of that. And it, and it gave me a, a sort of rebirth of spirituality. It was a very important epiphany. But, you know, I'm living it now. And there's there's nothing that, that can slow me down. There's nothing that can stop me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving life like never before. And, and I, I take it now as part of my mission to be able to share this with people. And for all the people that, that, that see those emotional responses of their own and go, well, you know, what do we do? What do we do? Well, the, you know, before you can ever be a, a warrior for truth in any way, you have to master a certain amount of, of self-discipline and be, be able to take charge of your own psyche, you know, to be internally free. And it, and it is a discipline and it is a practice, but it, Every time you can think about exactly what I'm saying in the moment is all you have to do is decide to be happy. All you have to do is make that choice and you can take charge of, of your own mind and your own attitude and your own outlook. And when you're able to do that, you're able to be truly free. All right, I want to close on this. I'm going to come back in the next segment, the segment after that, and finish with the callers. Michael and David and Anthony and Peachy and Jason, I promise I'll get to all of you. But Adam, what about this? Some libertarian free people say, oh, have an abortion, it's your choice, even though it's a bad form of birth control, but the social engineers want that. But then if you really realize that is a baby, separate heartbeat, separate human, when you start killing, and we've done the math now from the UN's own side, it's 2 billion, 250 million, they estimate in the last 50 years, 50 million a year, and now it's kill old people. Now it's babies aren't humans till age three. So, I mean, people, uh, there's really no debate. You can argue you have a right to kill your baby, but, uh, you know, in the final equation, it's saying they have a right to kill us and that we're all garbage and they're going to abort humanity. What is your view on abortion? Well, human life certainly starts in conception, and abortion is, is ending a human life. And uh, I think once you uh, establish that, you know, there there are... Uh, you know, different circumstances that dictate different things. And the more we get the government involved in it, you know, the more death we're going to have, the more. Uh, in, in, oh, yeah, government's pushing it. Well, I like that response because no one can deny that they're pushing abortion. No one can deny that, that this is a human. And if you really are into individuals and you're really into defending the weak, we've lost 55 million Americans we'll never meet or know here. And, 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 and they could empower people when you industrialize, give people wealth. They stop having kids anyways. So yeah. it, it's pure bull. Empower humanity now. Go ahead. Absolutely. No. And th there's a great temptation to, you know, deal with the difficult situations where abortion may be medically necessary. And when you, when you entrust those decisions instead of to mothers. But and that's not abortion. If it's going to kill the mother and the baby, right. it's, it's not abortion. Okay, well, actually, I really appreciate that. I've never heard that concept as, as redefining it that way. But as soon as you get government... But they don't even really call, they call it an emergency procedure to save the mother. And sorry, the baby didn't make it in the procedure. Because you're right. both going to die anyways. Right. Oh, no, and that's a very good point. You could redefine it and say that's not abortion. In that case, you're, you're absolutely right. Then abortion would be never called for. But as No, soon I mean, as you go uh, in and, the, and, the, and they try to keep the baby alive. It doesn't live. It's a, I mean, that's, the, that's another issue. As soon as you allow government to dictate when that's okay and when it's not, then everything is okay, and government is the ultimate excuse for immorality. Yeah, and and, and, then, and the pro killers use the example of that as a, as a worst case to, 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 to win the fake argument. And the whole point is, if we kill 55 million Americans, I, I mean, you know, th this is this is saying we're trash and we're not trash. Adam Kokesh, thank you so much. Visit infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.